Welcome to my channel on YouTube called Swimming in the Deep. <clears throat> if this is helpful to you, like, share, and subscribe, please. Today we're going to talk about saltwater generators, how they work in a pool. Basically, they make chlorine. So, just because you have a saltwater pool and a saltwater generator doesn't mean that you do not have a chlorinated pool. You have a chlorinated pool. You're just making your own chlorine, and you're making it through this device here. Uh, you have to keep your entire body of water salty. And to do that, you have to add salt, literally bags of salt that you can pick up at any home improvement store or Walmart during the end season, or you can get it wholesale through other places. You need to keep the right level of salt in your pool. In this case, this chlorinator, and most of them like this, they require range, and this is similar for the other ones too. Salt range for this one is 2,600 to 4,500 parts per million. Ideal is 3,600 parts per million. Right now my pool is at about 3,200 parts per million. And I know that because I have a screen logic system from Pentair that this actually will monitor in your salt level and report that back too. So it'll report it back to that, but you can also see it on the device. So when that's good, it'll be all green. And when it's low, this will be red here. And it'll tell you to add salt. You start with one bag first for most pools and you let it uh, dissipate in the pool and then you look at it half a day later or a day later and see if you're back up to the level and that'll tell you if you're right parts per million if you don't have a screen logic system or you can also look at the um, the Pentair easy touch and this system will communicate with it and it'll tell the system the the uh, the correct level uh, if the correct level has been reached in the Pentair in the Pentair Easy Touch system, which is the main wiring board and everything for auto pools that run on Pentair equipment, you can adjust this given the Pentair Easy Touch system because basically you, the system will adjust this device, or you can slide this forward and this will actually come off as well, um, and it, you can adjust the percentage of output that this device is giving. So this particular one is called an IC20. That means it's good for 20,000 gallon pools, which is about what this pool is, about 19,500 or 20,500, somewhere in there, given both bodies of water together. And, and that doesn't mean I can't use an IC40, model IC40, which is the next one up, or an IC60, it just means that I'll, I'll have to keep this at a higher level to get to the chlorine level that I need. So if I had an IC40, I could keep it really low and probably get twice as much lifespan out of this. So one interesting thing to, to note is that the lifespan of these is anywhere from three to six years, I believe Pentair says, and mine has lasted six years. This is a brand new one. So you'll see that the flow of this goes in your plumbing over there near the pump this way. And, and that um, you can see the plates in there that actually are uh, given some voltage and a chemical reaction occurs and uh, with the salt and it makes the chlorine. Now there is a flow switch in here so you need enough flow occurring before this will even work and this flow switch you probably never need to mess with but if it goes bad you could replace it it screws out and um, and it measures the flow of this flow meter switch right here which you can see is spring loaded let me tap it you'll see it bounce when the water's flowing through there and the contacts meet, it ensures that the flow is being met and chlorine can be made. The other interesting thing is, is that you don't want this running without the pump running. So you, that's the last thing you want to happen, but I believe because it could actually create chlorine gas if it's just sitting there running and no water's coming through it. So when you wire this in your Pentair Easy Touch system, you actually wire it in tandem with your pump. So when the pump's on, your coordinator's on. If the pump is not on at all, this cannot come on. So this is low voltage, 
but there's a transformer that supplies this and I believe it's a 24 volt transformer and it is included in your easy touch panel and system if you have that if you don't have that and this is independent you need to get the box and transformer that's independent of an easy touch system or another compatible Pentair system to power this to replace this one today is a pretty simple matter I need to take the other one out unplug it and then put this in and screw it in and the way I take it out is there's a coupler over there and um, and fittings in my plumbing that simply turn this the screw on and turn turn that on another thing that you need to know is that it recommends that you acid clean this every three months and to do that for the Pentair model this should never be fully submerged outside to inside to do that you either make or buy a kit from Pentair which is basically just a cap that goes on one end of it and once that caps on and you'll pour about 50 percent water in here down into that hole and then you'll finish it up with muriatic acid muriatic acid you need to have a mask on or plenty of ventilation or both and then add about 50 percent muriatic acid and then the, when you're cleaning this you'll see bubbles form into the top and you're basically it's it's uh, getting the uh, calcium and other deposits off of these plates so it can work again that's recommended every three months or so truth be told I only cleaned my other one one time and even then it didn't seem like it was getting anything off of it and yeah maybe mine probably would have lasted longer if I had kept it clean but when I tried to clean it a few weeks ago again not much came off of it so I guess my water has been fairly balanced um, and no deposits because it does you can't see any visible deposits and no deposits came off and yes I was giving the muriatic acid a pretty high dose to see if it works. So once the bubbles stop, I think they they say about every about 15 minutes is all it needs. Then you'll need to pour this into an area, pour it out into an area that is maybe gravel or something like that. Don't pour it onto concrete. It will etch concrete away if you get muriatic acid on concrete. And um, and then you're good to go to put it back in. So. How do you know when it's bad? Well, my chlorine level was so low the other day that something had to have been wrong. And I started thinking, probably mine's going bad. I walked over to my cell, and this light was flashing. Cell, flashing, inspect cell. So that means maybe you need to clean it, or it's at the end of its life. Most people say that when that's flashing, it's usually at the end of its life. Um, but it's worth trying to clean it because these are expensive right now. This is running over a thousand dollars and COVID shortages or whatever pools being built whatever and it's also in the middle of the summer This is running a thousand dollars now when I built my pool about six years ago. This was about four hundred ninety five dollars so I use some of the social media online forums and things like that and and sales and found one brand new in the box I live in Georgia. This one was in New Orleans, and the person would ship it to me and got it for a fraction of that. A really, really great deal I got, but you're probably just going to have to pay through the nose to get one if you need to replace it, if you can't find a deal. All right, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take you over to the pump that's on right now and tell you a little bit of detail of how we're going to replace this one today and how this is wired. So a little bit of noise, my pump's running. That's because if I turn off my pump, my coordinator wouldn't be on. See the light flashing on my old one? Indicating that it needs to be cleaned or replaced, in this case replaced, because I've already cleaned it. To replace this one today again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these couplings out and I'm going to put a new washer in, put some silicone lube on that washer. There's something called magic lube, or if you have a little bit of a silicone, you can rub on it not silicone glue or silicone caulk but silicone lubrication put that on there 
and that's because silicone works great uh, with gaskets and uh, you don't want to use petroleum based stuff as it makes them fall apart my cord runs over here and I will this is my Pentair easy touch system and I will unplug it here unscrew it and uh, unscrew this one and plug the new one in all right now we're going to shift into talking about briefly how this is wired so in my case this easy touch system is has a transformer in it, a 24 volt transformer that supplies power low voltage power to the Intel core if you want to study about how this is wired you can look over here there's scenarios for your um, your your low voltage and your I mean I'm sorry your 120 voltage and your uh, 240 voltage on how to do that different scenarios here depending on how you want to wire it what you want to do is you want to wire it the same as your pump your filter pump because the power is actually going to come off of here because that's where your um, your power needs to come into the transformer and that transformer in your box is here it's the bigger transformer in this system as you can see here and I'll take a look in here this is high voltage do not do this that is the saltwater coordinator um, transformer I believe it's 24 volts and supplied in the power comes off of my filter pump up there so it's wired in tandem that cannot come on if that's not on right so your filter pump has to be on and that's that's a safety mechanism and and what happens is uh, the power then comes from this as low voltage and will come up into the top of your system into your salt water coordinator board this is for an easy touch now the other way I'll, I'll cover that in a minute briefly your saltwater coordinator board is that board back in the back. Those four wires right there are running down the low voltage side over there and down to that plug. That's basically a COM port and it allows the, all that to communicate back into here. If you have a uh, screen logic, if you have a uh, pump that has COM port, all that will tie back into there because those are one, two, three different COM ports that can come into there in addition to your saltwater coordinator and they tie back into your COM port over here. So it's low voltage when it comes out. Low voltage is good because you've got it over there in the water, right? Um, you don't want to have high voltage in the water and you want to always be careful when you are messing with any of this. As I covered in my videos, I have a cutoff switch here. Just like an air conditioner, I can pull the power here. You want to cut that off if, necess if, you, if you can and if you can't figure out how to cut it off, right? Or hire an electrician. Uh, again, study this board right here, the door, and it will tell you everything that you need to know. I promise you it'll eventually make sense if you look at this long enough. And you'll, you'll see key things like your saltwater coordinator and how it's wired over here, 120 or 240, and it comes in from, from this. And, um, and then the low voltage side comes out of there. All right, I'm going to turn this off, and I'm going to uh, get this plumbed up. It's really easy to plumb it up because that's easy to take out. Originally what you have to do is you have to get those rings um, onto the PVC. So that has to be done at the time of plumbing. So I'm going to reuse those, but I'm going to put new gaskets in, uh, O-ring gaskets that came with the kit. It also comes with those couplings um, and, and instructions if you're installing this net new.